So now I'm going to turn it over to my Rail Midwest colleagues to share our recent teacher pipeline study. Take it away, Yanmay. Thanks, Billy. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Yanmay Wan, and I'm a senior researcher at AR. Um, I'm the principal investigator for this study on Indiana's teacher pipeline. Today, I'm going to provide a brief overview of the study, and then I'll pass it on to my colleague, Max Pardo, to share some of the key findings. So why this study? So this study was conducted in partnership with the Indiana Commission for Higher Education and the Indiana Department of Education. So leaders at these agencies, like those in many other states, were concerned about teacher shortages in the state schools, especially given the declines in enrollment in the state's teacher prep programs in the last decade. They are committed to better understand and addressing issues within the state's teacher pipeline. They want to know uh, the characteristic of students who entered teacher preparation and how the students were progressing in the pipeline. They were also interested in a better understanding of factors that might be related to the completion of a degree in education. So we conduct this study, uh, which focused on three cohorts of undergraduate education students. So these are students who first enrolled in Indiana's public colleges and universities between 2010-11 and 2012-13, and, and at who at any point in their college years enrolled in an education degree program. So we track the students longitudinally. Uh, we examine their degree completion, uh, their attainment of licensures within Indiana, their employment, as well as their retention within Indiana public schools. So we used a combination of public available data as well as administered data obtained uh, from the Indiana Department of Education and the Commission, Indiana Commission for Higher Education. So from the Indiana Department of Education, we obtained data on students' high school records uh, and the teacher employment and evaluation data, as well as teacher licensure data. And then from the commission, we obtained like college enrollment and degree records. And we also got public available data on characteristic of teacher preparation programs, as well as Indiana's public colleges and universities. Uh, so we, like I said, we tracked three cohorts of students up to 2017-18 for their like college post-secondary enrollment and certification and up to 2018-19 for their employment. So we described uh, who they were, what were their characteristics, and then the extent to which they reached each of the milestones in the teacher pipeline, like uh, including enrollment, when do they enrollment, uh, enroll in an education program, uh, what percentage completed a degree in education, what percentage attained an in initial instructional license in Indiana, and then who entered teaching in Indiana, and oh, to what extent they were retained within the states uh, and their performance on their teacher evaluation. Uh, we also conducted a uh, regression analysis to examine the relationships between the uh, between completing a bachelor's degree in education and a student's uh, characteristics, as well as a character characteristic of their first uh, college. So I will now turn this over to Max, who will highlight uh, some of the key findings from this study. Thanks, Inmei. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll be highlighting just some of the findings here. Uh, you can find the full set of findings in the report. Um, but the first thing that we wanted to do was just to describe the pipeline by the numbers. Um, so we looked at each major milestone, uh, as you may mention, starting with undergraduate students entering an education program, moving on to earning a bachelor's degree in education, earning an instructional license, and then uh, entering the classroom in an Indiana public school, and then remaining teaching for a second year. Um, so each bar here shows the number of students with arrows showing the percent who complete the next milestone and shaded regions showing attrition from the previous milestone. Uh, so we can see in those first two bars 
that around 11,000 students pursued a bachelor's degree in education between the 2010-11 and 2012-13 school years, um, and that 41% or about 4,500 of those students earned a bachelor's degree in education uh, by 2017-18. Uh, we also see that of that initial pool of a little over 11,000 students, only about uh, 1,700 actually entered teaching in an Indiana public school. Um, so we also, as the MA mentioned, described the group of students uh, at, at each milestone in order to see how its composition changed over time. Uh, and we found that diversity decreased in later stages of the teacher pipeline. Uh, so for example, 12.1% of the students who entered an undergraduate education program identified as a racial or ethnic minority, uh, but only 6.3% of those who completed an education program and earned an instructional license did the same. Uh, you can see the same pattern here in relationship to uh, eligibility uh, for the National School Lunch Program, which we use as an indicator of a student's economic background. Um, so from there, we used regression analysis in order to explore the relationship between a number of uh, individual and institutional factors and the time it took for students to complete a bachelor's degree in education. Uh, the factors we looked at included a uh, year of enrollment and education program, student demographics and background, uh, high school academic preparation, performance and financial aid in college, uh, and characteristics for the first college in which a student uh, enrolled. Uh, this slide and the next show median time to completion of a degree, uh, which is est the estimated time at which half of the group completed a bachelor's degree in education. Uh, we found that students who enrolled in an education program uh, in their third year of college or later had a lower probability of completing an education degree and a longer median time to completion uh, than students who entered the program in their first year of college. Uh, so similarly, we found that students who started at a two-year college and then transferred to a four-year college had a higher probability of completing a bachelor's degree in education and a shorter median time to completion than students who started at a four-year college. Uh, we also looked at how receiving financial aid either in the first year of college or in any uh, year after the first year uh, was related to completion of a bachelor's degree in education. Uh, so this table shows those relationships for any financial aid and then specifically for the Pell Grant and for Indiana's 21st Century Scholarship, uh, which is an Indiana scholarship program that provides financial grants and supports for up to four years at an Indiana college or university and requires students to enroll in grades seven or eight uh, and meet academic expectations in high school and college to maintain their scholarship. Uh, so downward red arrows here indicate a negative association with degree completion. Uh, while upward green arrows indicate a positive association with degree, degree completion. Uh, so we can see that students who receive the 21st century scholarship in their first year of college uh, or any financial aid after their first year of college were more likely to complete a bachelor's degree in education, uh, while Pell Grant recipients were less likely to complete their degree. Uh, so I can pass it back now to uh, Yinmei to discuss the key takeaways of some of these findings. Thanks, Max. So uh, Max highlights some of the key findings. There were more detailed, more findings, the more detailed findings in the report as well in the report appendix. Uh, so the findings we just highlighted suggest a few areas where education leaders in Indiana could focus their efforts to address the leaks in the pipeline. Uh, first, prioritize strategies that increase diversity in teacher pipelines. So the decreasing diversity we found along the pipeline is concerning, uh, particularly given an ever diversifying student body in Indiana. Um, second, to increase financial aid to students from low-income backgrounds beyond uh, what Pell Grant offered and beyond the first year of college, and at the same time, expand other support resources to them, such as college readiness support offered by the 21st century uh, scholarship. Uh, third, colleges might want to encourage students to enroll in an education program early in their college years. So colleges can support students uh, early in their decision making about majors and advise them to how to balance uh, their content area coursework with their education coursework. 
Uh, finally, state and teacher education leaders uh, could enhance policies and practice that encourage qualified students to transfer from two-year to four-year colleges and to enter education programs. So Indiana has created transfer single articulation pathways in 20 programs as of fall 2020, uh, including a few in, uh, in education like early childhood education, elementary education, special education, and secondary uh, science, science subject. So students completing these pathways can transfer all 60 credits into a bachelor's program at a four-year college. So the finding from this study uh, can support the state's ongoing efforts uh, to provide a smooth, predictable pathway for students in two-year colleges uh, from an associate degree to a bachelor's degree in education. Uh, so I, uh, like I said, the report has just been uh, published on the AUF website. So you can download the report and the report appendix. Appendix. I hope you'll get a chance to read that. We also developed a, a, a one-pager or a snapshot report, uh, four-page briefs, as well as an infograph to highlight some of the key findings. And our engagement team also had a blog post highlighting some of the key findings. So Max and I have, here's our contact information and we are happy to answer any questions you have for the study. Thank you, Max and Yinmei. So we're gonna pause and see if anyone has questions for our research team. And I've been monitoring the chat box. So I know there's quite a few that have come in. So let me just ask a few here. Okay. Um, so there was a question that came in that asked if, if for the sort of the pipeline as you guys showed it, mm -hmm. if you have the statistics for how many white students progress through the pipeline, uh, or maybe rephrasing, do we know the percentage of white students that stayed in comparison? Uh, we, we didn't like describe the percentage by uh, subgroups, but in our regression analysis, we do, uh, uh, conduct and then as analyzing whether students of different subgroups have different probability of complement degree. So we found that uh, white uh, students had the shortest time to or, or the highest probability of completing the degree, but that's not statistically significantly different from black or Hispanic students. But we do find that the students from other groups have, other race and ethnicities, like other than black, Hispanic, and white, uh, do take longer and uh, to complete the degree and have a lower pro probability of completing the degree. Thank you. Is there any way to tell how many students started teaching in the state that is outside of Indiana? Unfortunately, no for this, uh, uh, largely due to like data limitations. We don't, simply don't have data outside of like Indiana. Excellent. All right, for the low income variable, mm -hmm. did you use free and reduced lunch price from K-12 even if students enrolled after their first year of college? Uh, the, the, Percentage of the eligibility for free reduced price launch refers to their state as well in high school. And mm -hmm. after enrollment, we use the Pell Grant, whether students is a Pell Grant recipient or not. Excellent, thank you. Did part of the study include asking non-white educators why they did stay in the profession or is that beyond the scope? Uh, we didn't, uh, that, that's, uh, that's a type of follow-up study that we are hoping that this study will provide to like other uh, investigators to look at. Excellent. Did you see any difference in the pipeline for different certification areas? Uh, we don't, we don't examine that, the differences by subject areas. 